Okay, let's, uh, let's get to work. Wednesday was uh, curtailed because of environmental conditions. We need to, uh, I'm going to skip a few of the slides I would have otherwise taken you over, but they're in the PowerPoint. <laughs> Go ahead and review them. They're mostly uh, further discussion of types of displays and particular uh, medians and means. Uh, I want to jump right now to calculator use. And as I was saying, a week from the your test, we'll finish the material on Monday, probably, and give us most of Wednesday for review. You use the calculator, you will need to use a calculator on your exam. You can't borrow one, you can't loan one, borrow one from me. Make sure you check your batteries. <coughs> and if you don't have a TI that you're proficient in, equivalent operations, all right? Because it is a skill that you need for the exams. Okay, this little drill is about a, a special little technique that is discovered here. Where we went over calculating measures of center, the means, modes, the median, and the uh, mid-range, all the M's. Here's a specific case. If I have a frequency table, but I don't have the data values, can I estimate the mean? I don't think this is going to happen that often, but it's actually a good example to show you how to use a feature of the TI calculator, so we'll go through it. All right, so here's the challenge. Those are my classes, the frequencies. Now that's all you had, and you wanted to know or estimate what's the mean of those data values, all 78 of them. How would you do it? Well, here's a rational approach. For each class, I'll take the class midpoint. Now, I don't know where, what these two values are. All I know is there are two points in there between 50 and 69. They both could have been 50, they both could have been 69, I don't know. But to, to do my estimate, I'm gonna assume they were both 59.5, the midpoint. That's really all I'm doing down through here. I'm saying, well, there are seven points in here. I'm going to estimate by saying there are seven at the midpoint, 119.5. And then to calculate an estimated mean, the size is estimated, that's the formula. Sigma fx over sigma f. It's a weighted mean. The way you do it on your calculator is one of our stats, L1 comma L2. So please do that right now. And I'm going to introduce you to one of our stats, if you're not familiar with it already. Be your friend. We use it a lot. Now, if you're stuck on the calculator, don't be shy today. We've got to get right today so you have time to practice it for next week. Does that have different types of calculation on You have a different type of calculator? <laughs> that looks like putting a list, okay. So put in your list. I don't know the equivalent of the one bar status. I'm told I don't want to purchase it. So it's just kind of fun. Just asking Okay. Put those values in. I can't help you. I don't know. 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 The midpoints would be in L1, the frequency in L2. Okay, anybody not ready? Okay, what's going on? Okay, you have a slightly different interface. Right. Has everybody done one bar stats? Stat, count. Slide over to the right to count and then hit enter. Oh, and you see a list. 
and it's one bar stats. Now, on the TI world, if you've uh, updated your software recently, you'll see one of two ways. <coughs> this is kind of the old version that I have, or a new version of the software. It prompts you. It says, uh, what's the first thing it says? Data values? List. List and freak. Is that it? Yeah, there's less three. All right. So in your case, L1, L2. You're telling it, these are my data values. And oh, by the way, I have 33 data values, each of them 79.5. How do you plug in L2? L1 is already there for me, but I don't know how to plug in L2. You're always thinking? Good. How do you do it? Right. How do you do it? All right, we've got all these kinks ironed out today. You've done that, you've done calculate. Then you get a long list of stuff. All right. Now, eventually, we'll become familiar with most of the things in stat, uh, one of our stats. But for now, the very first one is x bar. All right, that's the mean, all right? That's the sample mean. When you are you asked next Friday, and you will be asked to calculate a sample mean, one of our stats, put your, you put your data in the list, and one of our stats, and we'll get X bar. <coughs> now, X bar, in this case, is a weighted mean because you use the option to put in frequencies. So you should see an X bar is 92.3. Anybody not see that? I, I would guess one of these is off a little bit. Yeah, Who did get 92.3? All right. Check your data values with be careful. I bet there's some data over here. List L1, freak L2, then yeah, go down to all right, here. Let's go look at your L1 and L2. Okay. Okay. Let's work the same dimension. All right, this, I'll quickly go through this laundry list, some of the items on the one bar stats. And if I can make it, we'll get to see some of the additional ones later on. But that's X bar is going to be your mean. You see sigma X, sigma, Greek sigma, that means the sum of X's. Sigma X squared, it's the sum of the squares of your data values. We won't use those too often, but occasionally, maybe it's in 106, we use, use those. I'll just note that the next two, S sub X and Sigma sub X, we're going to talk about those in about 20 minutes. And that's TI notation for what we will call S, and Sigma X is TI notation for what we call Sigma. <coughs> And I'll define what these are in a few minutes. Right? But you need to know this translation. Because if I ask you to find a standard deviation, a sample standard deviation, which is S, you'll be looking for SX on your calculator. Trucker. I'm still not. I'm still not going to get 99.5. Yeah, I'm getting that too. You double check the data? Okay. <laughs> so here's
so I just, I just put in one bar stats, L1, comma, L2. Yeah. Thursday night at 11, but I know you're not going to wait that long, right? This will give you some practice. Just drill on these. And seriously, this, these are easy points on your test, but you, you don't want to goof up on calculating problems. Drill on them. Right? Okay, enough said about that. I'll just quickly go over another example of weighted means, and then I'm going to push ahead to the next section so I can try to get you caught up. An example of a way to mean that is meaningful in your, your lives is something like is the GPA. The letter grades are A, B, C, D, and F. They're assigned a numerical value, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. But to find your GPA, it's not just the mean of the scores of the grades of your courses. It's weighted by the number of credit hours. An A in a three credit course is worth more in your GPA than an A in a one credit course. So the way it's done, it's these are the uh, X's, that's the values. And the weight then, I'll go over here. Let's suppose you got two A's, a B, and a D. And this was a three credit course, a two credit course, a three credit course, and a one credit course. And we want to calculate your GPA. So the X's are the values, the data values. Well, if A is worth 4, 4, 3, and 1. Now, what are the weights, the W's? Well, that's a 3 credit course, a 2, a 3, and a uh, 1. Now, in your calculators, put this in L3 and this in L4. So they don't want you to trample on the L1s and L2s. And do the same calculation again. One var stats, L1 comma L2. And that's how you calculate a weighted mean or your GPA. And tell me what this person's GPA is. You put X in L3. Please. L3, and then L4, the weights, and do the same operation again. One bar stats, L3, L4 this time. Got the answer? 3.3. I just made this up, so I don't know. No one else get 3.3? Yeah. All right. So that person has a 3.3. The D pulled it down, but fortunately, it's a one credit course. Okay, any questions on this so far?
look at the uh, these videos on YouTube, but uh, Major Cohen, I would appreciate constructive comments. Don't say anything about my tie or how I look or anything else. <laughs> this is we're, this is an experiment. This hasn't been done yet in, in mathematics in BMI, and it's we're trying this. You'll also see some a different flavor of videos for 106. That's where you don't get to see my face. I'm just talking and doing a PowerPoint. I prefer those myself. But uh, we're gonna be working on that, these kind of things in the next few years to get those additional training materials out there to help you. So seriously, if you got suggestions, let us know. All right, I'm now going to push.